Did you eat? Yeah, all right. Sit a bit. Oh, you hardcore boxing fans out there. How you doing? It's little porky here. Little porky at 215 pound. An incredible shrinking man. why my channel can rub people up the wrong way one minute people can like yeah the next minute I mean, what happens if Josh Whale gets a split decision and I say look Mick I think I think Josh got beat does that mean I'm gonna fall out with Mick well no I don't think so because Mick he's a man's man isn't he he'd probably respect you more for saying that he'd probably think you were a prick if you were running around saying yeah Josh won mate Josh won Mick but then you were telling other people you thought he won. He'd rather you be honest with yourself. If you tell the truth we make, you're all right, aren't you? But I suppose it's it's a bit hard, isn't it? It can play on your mind, and it's been on my mind since I told him the other day on the phone. But telling them face to face in their own gym, I thought your guy lost, in my opinion. But then you can water it down, can't you? And you can say, well, I thought Sheedy uh, beat Langford, but he didn't get the decision. It swings and roundabouts, isn't it? It's the boxing industry, isn't it? A split decision in Sheffield, Tommy Frank's going to get it. But what it normally means is if when you're getting a split decision and you're fighting at home, it means you got licked. Does that mean that Frotch got licked against Durrell? No, totally different fight. Durrell, Andre Durrell, were falling about all over the place. And he had a point to coffee, didn't he? Which is like a knockdown. So it's one of them things, isn't it? One of them things. Please keep left in 300 yards and follow the A6178. Like lane, you in, mate? Because, mate, I ain't wrong lane, me then. See, I'm problem when I'm driving right here because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm ready for a retest. No, keep left. Keep left. Oh, city centre. Where am I going here? Sure, it's that way. Uh, so we're on my way, on my way up to. Turn right. I'm on my way up to uh, Glen Roads, Jim, for a chat with Glen. I get Glen on camera. Tommy will probably not be in today. He'll probably off for a week now. I think I've come the wrong way here. Mm -hmm. Come on then. How can it be up there? Oh, I don't even know where I am. Probably this way, isn't it? Uh, wicked Archers, what is that? Oh, I'm all over the place here. Every time I come to Glen Rose, Jim, it's a nightmare. I should be going that way. I don't understand this satin of it. It's all blibs and blobs, man. I wonder what they're going to do with, uh, with Kane Salvin then, he's 4-0 oh now. I uh, wonder where Kane goes now after that performance of the day. I don't know. I don't know. Let's have a look. Derek Dooley Way. Tell you what is a good fight though, Tyrone Nurse against Darren Tetley, 
or Darren Tetley against Darren Tetley against Anthony Tomlinson. They're good fights, them. They're good fights, them. Anthony Tomlinson, 11 and 0. He's coming, isn't he? He's got a belt, IBO, not to be sniffed at. Everybody knows I'm a massive, massive IBO fan. Massive. Uh, massive. I, think, I just think they've got a touch of class about them. You never hear any scandal, do you, with IBO? There's never any scandal, is there, or anything like that with them? Please turn right in yeah, 300 yards at the end of the road. Never doubt you sat now. I watched a program the other day, right? Where, the square. where they were doubting. Put me out on him. The, on her. They were they were doubting the computers, you know, in the in the aeroplane that crashed or something. They were doubting it. Why? They're there for a reason. It's like my dash here, right? On my dash. If a car if a light comes up on dash, it's come up for a reason, hasn't it? You don't say, oh I'll get my mate Please to check take it off. Exit with its laptop. And follow the A6. I'll get my mate to take it off with a laptop. Well, why? It's come on for a reason, hasn't it? If you don't take it off, or you take it off, it's just going to come back on, isn't it? Then another light will come on. You've got to keep on top of things inside your car. Like me, I keep on top of them. This way, isn't it? Is it? I bet I've come the wrong way. But. I'm glad for all them lads at SBC anyway. I'm glad for all of them. Fuki, uh, Glynn, all of them. I'm very glad. I can't make way here. No, I think it's down here. Yeah, this way, innit? Do you know what? It's so confusing, Sheffield, at times. The roads and that. But, uh, getting back to Glyn Road's gym, I think he's got a good thriving gym there now, and hopefully he can build some up with to off Tommy, off at back of Tommy. I think that's good. I think that's good. Ryan Rhodes has got a gym up here. He's doing well. There's Dennis's gym. We've got uh, Ingle Jim. I put a tweet out over there and a few people said I were out of order. Why am I out of order? Regarding Michelle Phelps, she's got a big a big YouTube company like that. She comes into Sheffield. She lives in Manchester now, don't she? She drives into Sheffield over Snake Pass and she uh, she goes to Ingle Gym. Please take the second exit at the square and follow the A61. She comes into Sheffield, right? And goes to Ingle Gym. She doesn't go to Dennis's gym. And she doesn't go to uh, Glyn Road's gym. She doesn't go to uh, Steel City Gym is it, or, or the, the Davies Gym where Chris Smedley and, and Luke and Nicky are, she don't go there, she, she, she does, there's a couple, of, she don't go to Ryan Rose Gym, well, I've not seen her there, she goes to see Billy Joe, Dominic, Gallard, Kelbrook, that's it, for gossip, she don't go around, she don't go to any amateur shows in Sheffield, she had a chance to go to an amateur show, Mark Bateson's, Mark Bateson had a show, I think, I think, in fact, I think it were a professional show, uh, and how far is Manchester to lead? She was asked, and she said she'd have to see what she were doing. These people are only interested in viewing, in interviewing the right people. I've mentioned this many times, and it's wrong, they've got a, they've got a bigger voice than what I've got. I mean, you see where I'm coming from? And, and, the, and the coin in it, in off these channels and every time I see Tyson Fury he's doing an interview with her because she knows within three months that'll be on five, six hundred thousand views. She'll be getting paid off that, won't she? About a grand. Every time she interviews Tyson Fury, she's a thousand, it's a minimum of a thousand pounds for her. 
minimum that one thousand pound now fair enough she's a business lady isn't she and from what I've heard from what Rob Tebbett was telling people she's pretty hard-nosed well fair enough isn't it you have to be hard-nosed in business don't you I should have gone up there then prepare to turn left but I don't think it's fair I mean if you can go to Glen Rhodes Jim why can't you go to Ryan's gym Ryan Rhodes now we all turn the cameras aren't it I just have a bee in my bonnet about things, I just have a bee in my bonnet about things like that and to be honest with you I think she's a really good interviewer of truth be known. Apart from that <laughs> Apart from that fake laugh, I think she's I think she gets it. I think she more or less understands how boxing works. But I think she lets herself down where she's not going above and beyond. I don't know, I don't think I could ever get like that, but Maybe I'm fortunate enough that I don't have to kiss ass. Maybe. But I'm, I'm disappointed from him. At least Coogan tries to get to him, doesn't it? Shows or he tries to send somebody. No cop cars around here, does there? Come on. I'm gonna spend all my life. Traffic lights. Well, it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. As soon as I come here, I get a cup of tea. Same, just like going to Mick Wales, get a cup of tea. You want a cup of tea, Porky? Actually, it's coffee, son. Coffee. Uh, shout out K official. Oh, oh. Clothing range, K official. If you need any clothing for your gyms, there you go. Oh Porky doing a U-turn. Please turn right in 100 yards and then turn left. Now turn right. Uh so what can we talk about with Glyn Rose today? Well, it's going to have to be his fighters, isn't it? And what's planned for the future and why Glyn Rhodes only stops one hour at after parties instead of five like everybody else. <laughs> People want to get home, don't they? When you run in a gym, it's a full-time job, isn't it? You've got no Please life. Please turn left in 200 yards at the end of the road onto Infirmary Road and then immediately make a U-turn. Uh, I think. Now turn left and then Somebody. immediately make a U turn. Go on then. Stay for weather, in it for the sunroof open. Nearly here now. Prepare to turn right. Uh, this is where I always mess up when I come here, mate. I get lost. Not that one. Be a good interview this week, Glenn. He, always, he usually gives you a bit, Glenn. He's straight to right point. In 200 yards onto Cutterby Bank Road. Straight to point. Uh, then Mick Wales at. Now turn right. Five o'clock, is it? Five o'clock. Prepare to turn left and then immediately turn left. The route is being calculated. Prepare to turn left. Uh, and immediately turn left. A lot left. of people don't know this actually, watch channel, but Glyn Rhodes used to train Errol Bob McGraham, training for world title fights. 
good trainer. I'm sure it's one of these Please here. turn left in 200 yards onto Patton Road and then immediately turn left. That one there. See if I can get down here. Like a little rabbit hutches, aren't they around here? Make a U-turn if possible. Oh god, do a U-ey. We've got to do a U-ey. I think I might have found it. Oh. Oh. You have reached your destination. Wait a yet. We've met it. Should be a good interview with this. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. On Burton Street School with Glen Rhodes, MBE. Maybe you get a parking ticket and you're going all the way. You need a letter for court. Glen Rhodes is your man. He can't send him down, Your Honour. He's my friend and I've got an MBE. We're going to park here. Looking good, is it? Have a look. Parking situation here is dire. Dire Straits. Oops. Ed Obama Graham on his day would have scored anybody, wouldn't he? In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to pull straight into the disabled part. Why not? I mean... Go! Two minutes! Ross! Yeah, I'm pull it, pulling up now. To get parked. So I don't want to be putting it in a spot where anybody could crash into me. That's perfect, that. Whoops. Go on, mate. Didn't see you there, mate. Nearly ran over you. <laughs> Does that look alright, mate? Am I in a good spot? Yeah, just come back a bit because wheelchairs come down. Oh, do they all? What, what, people come by in wheelchairs? Yeah. Is that enough? They just need to come through that bit. Flipping hell. That's all we need. That's all we need, isn't it? Somebody coming around in a wheelchair, scratching Pokemobile. It's no good, is it? What are you worrying about that, Steffi? Mm, I'll have to get my mate to paint it then, won't we? Whoops! So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. Boom. And battery is just about to go, so I've just timed it right. So put a battery in for the Glen Roads interview, full battery. Shout out to, uh, what's he called, what's that guy called now? Nah. Shout out to Robert Britton. Keep your comments coming, Robert. We know that's not your real name though, don't we? <laughs> Hashtag levels. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big Porky here. The voice of hardcore boxing. And I am joined by legendary Sheffield boxing Trainer, Glyn Rhodes, MBE. How are you doing, Glyn? I'm all right, Russ. How are you? I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. It's uh, good. Nice to see you, pal. Yep. Nice, nice to see, see you, as always. We'll have a cup of tea. Uh, uh, keen to be doing these regular after your after shows at ours, don't we? Good. Uh, first of all, we'll jump straight in with it. We'll start off with, obviously, Dennis's show, but what do you think about Sufjan? Um, I didn't actually sit to tell you the truth. I didn't see any of the other bouts. Uh, I've watched one or two clips since then. 
But obviously, you know, when you've got a kid boxing for a 12 round fight yeah. and you've got a kid on first, you know, I went in the ring with Kane and then I got back in the changing rooms and I, I hardly saw any of the other fighters. Obviously, I'm in the changing rooms with Tommy getting ready for a 12 round fight, so it's not like I kept nipping in and out like you normally do yeah, watching yeah. maps. So I never really saw Sofiane's fight. But obviously, John told me how he boxed. Um, and you know, the show rolls on. Everybody's got a win. Everybody won, didn't they? Got a win. Um, yeah, got a win. So the show rolls on, and uh, again, they're only babies. You know, they're only, they only had a few fights between them. It's a learning curve. Um, we're, not, we're not talking about titles or anything stupid just yet for them. It's about learning your trade. Yeah, yeah. So, so moving on from Sufjan Ahmed, he won. Yep. Kane Salvin. Kane again. You, you, you've got to cut Kane a little bit of slack. He, um, he's four and zero oh now. He's four and zero. Oh. He's only eighteen year old. He's eighteen year old. So yeah, he could have done a lot more. He could have done this. He could have done that. But he's eighteen year old. He's a baby. Yeah. So we're not in no rush with him. Uh, I only actually saw three rounds of his fight because what I did in between round three and four, I ran back to the changing rooms to get Tommy ready. Um, but again, you know, he won easy against a journeyman, uh, a good journeyman, um, and one or two people saying, "Oh, he should have done this and he should have done that," but he's learning. I'm glad you just said that because a lot of people, when I ask them the questions about their opponents, they say. He was a good kid, rough, tough, no. rocky. You know all that. He was a journeyman, man, wasn't he? He was there. He was there. He was there to, be to stopped, do a job. He was there to do a job, to and, that, and his job was to test my kid. Yeah. You know, I think he, he, had, he had a lot of fights, not one in yeah. but a tough kid. And you know, his, his role is to test my kid. Uh, my kid's only had three fights. That was his fourth fight. Mm -hmm. So he, he came, and his his sole intention, from our point of view, was to test my kid and then move him on to the next level. That's what journeymen do. And so, yeah, he could have done a lot more. I heard people saying he could have done this and he could have done that, but again, he's had three fights, he's 18 year old, and fights like that are just what a kid needs to keep building. You know, you're laying the foundation. Yeah. You're laying the foundations. And we're not talking about no 10 rounders or 12 rounders yet. He's had four fights, and I'm happy with how he's progressing yeah. at the moment. Yeah, yeah, good. Now, moving on from Kane, so we've done Sufjan, we spoke about Kane. Tommy Frank. Tommy, yeah. What do we think? First of all, Tommy's opponent. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's opponent, what, he's what I'd call a dark horse. Yeah. yeah. Um, we all did our own work, tried to find, you know, you, you usual, you go on box ready, you go on YouTube. Yeah. Mm. Um, and obviously, he kind of like slipped under the radar, which he did. Um, it, it wasn't until after that I found out that he'd had over 65 Muay Thai bouts. Um, for anybody who knows, Muay Thai is one of the hardest sports in the world, you know, they're using elbows and... The, and um, a good kid, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he was a tough kid. And I knew straight away when he came out throwing them bombs, I thought, he's not come to lay down. Uh, he'd only had a handful of fights, had he had seven fights or something. Um, but then again, Tommy's only had 12. So, you know, we did all the usual things, spoke to people, nobody knew him. Uh, but he definitely slipped under the radar, um, which... You know, I kind of like feel I let myself down by not finding out a little bit more. But you can only do what you can do, you know. In short space. Yeah, of time. in short space of time. The thing is, as well, I always say this: most kids, you know, who grow up in Thailand, the one thing that they're going to do all competing at some point is Muay Thai. Um, and obviously, we found out later that this kid was a top top performer at Muay Thai. Uh, it was tough. You know, he got, he got a big heart, he took some shots, and he took Tommy to the wire, and that's it. Did you have Tommy winning in England? Yeah, but what I like to do, I had Tommy winning, but the thing is I always do is, I watch it through biased eyes, mm. like most trainers do. Yeah. The things that Tommy were doing were catching my eye, mm. where the other guy weren't catching my eye so much. So mm. I never comment on a fight until I've watched it again. For, I'll, I'll give you for instance. I remember when Errol Graham boxed uh, Mike McCallum at the Albert Hall. Um, it went off a point you lost by, didn't he? Yeah, but on the night, I had to put my life on it that Errol easy beat him and whatever, and he got a point took off him. And I learned then that, you know, your emotions are involved mm. and you shouldn't really comment on the you night. Were you training for that fight? No, I didn't. I was training with him. Yeah. Uh, we were only kids. Which there, world title fight did you train for? I trained for the, his last one, the Charles Brewer one in uh, Atlantic City. Did you training for Chris Johnson? Yeah, yeah, we trained, yeah, Chris Johnson. Field, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Again, they thought Errol was going to be a stepping stone for yeah. Chris Johnson. But I'd had a bit of a. I'd step back from Errol because I, I was one of the people who thought that he shouldn't be boxing. 
So Dean Powell stepped in, uh, you know. And trained him for that fight. I trained him for that fight. He did the corner on the night. Dean did the corner. Um, He's a good boxing bloke, do you know? Yeah, but I knew straight away that Errol had got Chris Johnson's number. Uh, he just, he just, again, I'm the first to put my hand up to say, after Errol's first comeback fight against Terry, Terry Ford, mm. I said, Errol, it's, it's not happening. And then he went on to prove everybody wrong, box for the world title, and put up a good performance against him as well. But going back to what I was saying about Mike McCallum and Errol, I remember on the night, I'd, I'd have stuck my life on it that Errol beat Mike McCallum. Um, and then when you come away and watch it again in the calmness of your living room, you think to yourself, I was wrong, I was probably wrong. So what I do now is, like I say, you watch it through biased eyes. So I never comment until I've gone away and watched it again. I've still not watched it yet. And then you don't watch it, you know, your emotions are not involved and you're not, you're not, you're not in the heat of the moment. So you, you often find, then what happens is you've got a different outlook on the, on the, on the fight. So I've not had a chance to watch it yet. I am going to watch it and, uh, you know, I'll make my mind up then. But luckily we came through. It was a fight where Tommy, you know, he, he ticked all the boxes. You know, he got hurt. He got he's hurt. He blood, didn't he? he yeah, he, was, he, he took some body shots. He was weeing blood. Uh, it, were, it, were a, it were a tough, tough fight uh, on both on both sides. Both kids showed plenty of bottle, um, and luckily our guy came through it. So the positive thing is we can take from it. I think is what happened in there in that 12 rounds with Tommy. He could. It might have took him another five or six yeah. fights to learn. Yeah. He's, he's seasoned now. He's had that, but he's yeah. a few miles on clock now, isn't it? Yeah. I, that's what I said earlier. Yeah. You know, you put your miles on your clock, and I don't like that in young fighters. Somebody's babies aren't they? Yes. I always say that. You're not and treat them you, ex, the way you expect your own babies to be looked after. Well, we can't be putting them in with knockovers no. all the time. You don't want give me fights at that level. And Do you think we got it wrong? We it was too hard fight for him at this time. Uh, Could we be in a dark horse? Hindsight's always a great thing, isn't it? Yeah. Like I say, you know, looking back, yeah, it was a tough fight. Uh, let's hope it's not too many miles on his clock. But he's also answered a lot of questions. Yeah. You know, he, he's he's shown that he can. He took a few body shots. He took a few shots to head. He came back mm -hmm. and he stayed in there. And you know what? I was proud of the kid on the night I were. Oh yeah. Yeah, very much so. You've got to remember, again, I get emotionally involved. I've had these kids since we were 11 years old. Mm. Uh, Tommy's now 20, early 20s, something. So when you've had them in here, you know, driving up and down country, all over his 11 year old kids, 12, 30, you get, you get a bit emotionally attached to them. So when you're looking at them in there and you're getting hurt, you, you kind of like feel it a little bit yourself. Um, you know, he's the one taking the shots, but you're the one sometimes thinking. Um, so when it were an hard fight, as it were, you know, I, I thought to myself, I dropped a bit of a goalie there, you know, saying that kid were okay because he were, he were, he, 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 given the choice, looking back, I wouldn't have took that fight. Yeah. But again, hindsight, hindsight's a great thing. If Dennis had said to you at the weigh-in, oh, Glenn, this guy's had 65 more tie fights, what would you have said? Well, I'd have expected Dennis to have said that. Before, before the weigh -in. A week before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd have said, oh, hang on a minute, let's think about this. Then. It's all right looking at a guy's record and saying he's only had eight fights, eight fights or something, something and six, so you go, oh, that's not bad. You look at you look at his record, you go on YouTube, you go on box rec and you cross examine, you think, yeah, that's all right. But records are always a bad thing to look at because, mm. again. For example, Joshua's only had 91 rounds as a pro. 91, exactly. And he's already the same, he's exactly. finished, he's won everything and now he's on the side. No. He's over in 91 yeah. rounds. No, no, you can't. Well, so, people want it to quit, don't they? Yeah, and I don't. I, I, I think about it, it's a long, long journey. Brendan always used to say to me, it takes 10 years to make a good fire. Mm. Um, and you think to yourself, well, hang on a minute, 10 years, that's a long time. But it is a long time. But if you look at your people like your Marvin Aglers and your Leonard's and your Durands, when they were 29 and 30 year old, they were mature, strong, they took some beating, didn't they? Yeah. But when you're a 22 year old kid, 23, you're still like Tommy, he's not got his man strength yet. Yeah. Um, so by the time he's 30 year old, he's going to have his man strength, he's going to be, he'll have experience to go with his man strength. Yeah. And it'll be a great fire. Yeah. Right, we'll move it, move it. So Tommy Frank's got his win. Yeah. Uh, he's going to New New York. Is he where you're off? Yeah. Where are you going to now? You know, um, Pennsylvania. <laughs> we're gonna we're in New York, and then we drive up to Pennsylvania. For anybody who don't know, we went to a place called uh, Deer Lake, which is the 
training camp of Muhammad Ali. Uh, Ali bought the training camp. Well, I don't, I don't. He bought it and turned it into a training camp. And what is it now? It's a museum. It's a museum. We're the greatest train. We're the greatest train. So we're going to go up there. We've got a friend um, over there who's meeting us up there. And it's a museum, and you know, it's where people go and spend days looking. This is where Muhammad Ali used to train for some of his biggest fights. He's got, he's got all the big rocks outside with all the champions' names painted on it. And, I, and you can imagine, it's just what a fighter would want. Is it all the champions that he's for? No. Oh, it's, it's just no, it's Jersey Joe yeah. Walcott, Rocky Marciano, Joe Louis, Sonny Liston, it's everybody. And you can imagine waking up there in the morning, getting up to do your road work, mm -hmm. and seeing them big rocks, and there's one big black rock, and the black rock is Jack Johnson. Uh, <laughs> it's a black rock, it's the only black rock apparently. So. You can imagine waking up in that place and it being, and they call it the fighter's heaven because that's what it is, you know. How many fighters are lucky enough to be able to go to training camp? You know, it's only, it's only recently that fighters talk about training camps. We're going to training camp, we're going to Marbella, we're going to Tenerife. But Ali, he, he had this training camp before people knew what training camps were. You know, he got log cabins where his sparring partners stayed. He, had he wanted first ones to do camps, wasn't he, where you live away, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, lived away from it and lived the life, you know. But every, he had to do that because he never had no peace, did he, where, where, where he stayed, did he? he couldn't do the job no. properly, could he? You can imagine, you know, we all know fires at the moment and it's chaos. Being around him is chaos. So trying to focus on a fire when, when it's so chaotic around you, you need to get away. You need to get away from your, your wife, your girlfriend, your family, your... your and it's just nice to get away and concentrate just on boxing. But that's great if you're fortunate enough to be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, and Muhammad Ali obviously works so he built this camp. Uh, it's now a museum. So we fly to New York on Sunday and we drive up to Deer Lake, Pennsylvania on Tuesday. We all look around there and we'll come back the next day. And it's one of them for me, because I'm a big Ali fan. It's one of them you just want to tick off. It's yeah. not somewhere you go again and again and again. But I just want to, you know, a massive Valley fan. I went to the funeral, and it's just some, somewhere I want to go, travel, look at, and, and just say, yeah. you know, you, you tick it off your box. It's your bucket. You've been to Ali's house in Louisville, though, haven't you? Went to, yeah, went to the house in Louisville. There's a, there's a picture there. Yeah, the day after the funeral, a little bit chaotic. Um, but again, it's not somewhere you'd go back to. But as a boxing fan, which is what I am, it would be great. You went, then. Oh God, yeah. I, I'd like to have gone under different circumstances, because obviously I was there for the funeral. Yeah. I'd like to have gone uh, while Muhammad Ali had still been alive, because when I went, there were all flowers outside the house, and um, you know, he'd been buried the day, the, the day after I went, the day before I went, sorry. So I'd like to have gone under different circumstances. Mm. But again, this is where it's a bit tricky, because if Ali hadn't died, I wouldn't have gone. So the only reason I went was to go to the funeral, and while I was at the funeral, I went to his house, uh, looked around Louisville, met a, a, a nice bloke that I'm still friends with, uh, call him Pinder. It's his birthday today, so happy birthday. Um, you know, and I've, I've got a friend in Louisville. Uh, and who, whoever goes to Louisville, it's, it's not somewhere... It was like Florida, anyway. Yeah, yeah, Florida, yeah. Vegas. Yeah, Las Vegas, New York, Florida, you never yeah. go to. But, you know, again, it's another one to tick off your bucket list. Yeah. So Tommy's going to be taking a, a couple of weeks off then before he gets back in gym. Yeah. You're going, you're going to see Arl, uh, Arlie. We're going away on Sunday, camp. having a week off. Uh, and then and then is Tommy going to be out November 29th or is he going to be... Uh, unless, uh, unless, it depends, I've not met with anybody yet, not met with Dennis or anybody, yeah. so we don't exactly know what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, we've got to sit down with Dennis and see where we go from here. Um, you know, November, it's not that far away, and after a fight like Tommy had, he definitely needs a rest. Mm -hmm. He needs a rest, he needs to, you know, I'm not saying he's coming in the gym tonight to help the kids and spend time with kids, which is what he always does. Yeah. Um, but he needs a rest. It's about a tick over the fight. And yeah, maybe. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, a little work, you know. But, you know, these tick over fights can always end up being banana skins. Yeah, you know, you can break your hand, you can yeah. get, clash your heads, cut eyes up. Again, this boxing game is such a risky business. It's all right saying you're going to have a tick over fight and then you get your eye cut or something goes wrong. So at the stage that Tommy's at now, you've got to be very, very careful what you do and, and where we go. We don't want no, we don't want no slip ups. Well, if we if we leave it now while uh, 
last first week in March, you're looking at October, November, December, January, February. You're five and a half months out of the ring, aren't you? So yeah. Yeah. You're caught in no man's land, yeah. aren't you, yeah. really? You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You're damned if you don't. The kid wants to earn, doesn't he? And he wants you to You don't watch. want him to go scale. No, I like but fighters. He's just had a, a life and death, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah, I like fighters to box regularly. The only way you get better at boxing is by boxing. You could spend hours and hours in the gym. It doesn't substitute for actually being at the show, yeah. having your hands properly taped up, you know. So there's nothing better for a fighter than being on yeah. the show and doing it that way. So there's no substitute for it. So I don't want Tommy to be out until March. That's that's too long. Yeah. And then you're rusty. And then yeah. you, you know, and then that can affect your performance as well because you know you're a little bit rusty. So uh, we want to get him out, like you say, maybe a move around um, just just to shake the cobwebs off. Um, and then let's see what happens after Christmas. What road we're going to go down? Where we're going to go? What we're going to do? Um, yeah. And, and as yet, like I said, we've not sat down with anybody, we've not sat down with Dennis and spoke about anything, so um, I think we're meeting, we're having a meeting tomorrow and uh, we'll see where we go. But from, the, from, from the, the whole show, I've not heard nothing bad. Everybody were happy, everybody enjoyed it, everybody said, you know, it was, it was some good fights. Um, so everybody's gone away happy. So all them people will come back again and that's basically what you've got to do. Get them bums on the seats. Yeah. Uh, so, other than that, your, all your three fighters won Friday night, you're all happy. Your We're all happy. flying at the moment, isn't it? Jim's flying. I'd just like to say as well, on the same night that Tommy won, we had a young kid called, he's 18, another guy who we brought up from being a baby, from 11 year old and he's 18, he just won the Yorkshire title on the same night. So we kind of like split. We got, show was that on? Um, it was Manor ABC. Oh, yeah. We. So we had a bit of a problem because everybody obviously wanted to come to Tommy's fight. Yeah. So quite a few of our guys went to support Owen. And we had another young lad having his first bout as well called uh, Taylor. He had his first bout. Uh, Owen won the Yorkshire title. So on Friday night, as a gym, as a unit, which is what we are, it, it, were, it were unbelievable. Two belts. So I'm hoping Owen's coming down tonight with his belt and Tommy's coming with his belts. We're going to have a lovely picture. And again, the other thing that I'm proud of both of them, and, and, and the gym as well, both of these kids have come from raw novices to winning titles. Yeah. And I think that's, that as a trainer, that is what, you know, they've not come from another gym, I've not coached them, I've not, they've come and they've grown up in here uh, and they're winning titles, so we're doing something right. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, Moving on then from that, let's have a look about what's happening in boxing at the moment. Uh, what do you think about this Saudi, Saudi Arabia, Joshua rematch clip? Well, the thing that I, I always think with boxers is, you know, if boxers can earn money, you know, this is yeah. the hardest sporting world, yeah. you know, you, you can say whatever you like, there's politics involved and everything, but if boxers can go to Saudi, like Amir Khan, I heard he got a ridiculous amount of money for his fight. Seven right? million. Seven million. I see if he'd have been happy with that. So, well, so, well, <laughs> so if boxers can earn money, I'm all for that. Because it's the hardest game mm -hmm. in the world. You never know when your career's over. So if you can go if I could get some guys boxing in Saudi and earning money, listen, let, let's go to Saudi. So I'm all for boxers earning money. Hardest sport in the world, you never know when it's gonna finish. Um, so anything that boxers can earn, I take my hat off to that. Yeah. Uh, so you you're not happy about? I uh, sorry. Are you happier that the fans have got to pay? Sorry to go to, to Saudi, or do you think Joshua's got to look after himself in case it's his last fight? Well, as a boxer, every fight could be your last fight, mm. and that's what you've got to always remember. Mm. Every fight you have could be your last fight. We've had guys in here who, um, some guys, a guy called Jake Winford, never even had his last fight because he failed at the first hurdle, failed his medical, failed his MRI, whatever. So you've always got to think with boxers, each fight could be your last fight. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and again, how many people are going to be fortunate enough to be able to go to Saudi? It's good. Mm. For an average person to go and support uh, their fighter in Saudi, it's going to cost you a fortune. You know, you've got your flight, your hotels. Yeah. Um, 3,000 quid, isn't it, full package for one ticket? It's, 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 it's a lot of money. Uh, but again, you know, Joshua's thinking about any money, more money. Um, so. It's, it's a tricky one. I'm a boxing fan and I'd love to go. But obviously, a lot of people aren't going to be able to afford to go, are they? No. So, and then the other 
thing is they're going to have to pay pay-per-view to watch it on TV as well. So, it's what do you think about the rumour that the pay-per-view is going to be extra? Uh, on Sky? I'm of the opinion, you know, if look, <laughs> I'm of that opinion that a few people. Are, if I'm paying for Sky TV, I don't want stinging again to have to pay again, yeah. again and again and again because mm. it's just it's just. Just well, it's gone from 14.95 to 16.95 to 19.95, and now I got it wrong. I said 25, 24.95, but yeah. I've heard that it's 21.95. They're going to put some out on social media and see what the reaction is in the next couple of weeks. I don't know about that. I like I say, you, you, it's just getting on. It's, it's getting ridiculous. Money, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of money for an average for your average boxing fan. Mm. You know, it's, it's a lot of money to be. You know, you want to watch it. And I also think it puts people off because what people yeah. will do is they'll not watch it no. and then they'll go on social media next day next and day watch, watch it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I would think it would be a bit, f I don't know, I'm not that smart, but would it not be better to make it accessible for everybody to watch? So, you yeah. know, you know, lower the price so you get more views, mm -hmm. more people watching it, yeah. but making it, what, 26 quid? 24.95. 20, 24, 25 quid, it's a lot of money, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. It's a lot of money, so. But then, I, but I've also heard 22, so it remains to be seen what they're going to do. But if it is his last fight, and they are cashing out, I can see where Eddie Hearn's coming from, because he's a, he's a numbers man, isn't he, Eddie? Yeah. Yeah, it's business. It's, it's business. I mean, we all know what happened when Steve Collins lost against Eubank the second time. They basically bailed out of boxing, didn't they, match room? It's, it's business. Until his dad, until Eddie yeah. came. Right. It's, it, it, you know, you've got two sides of boxing. You've got the boxing side, yeah. what, what we do, and then you've got the business side. Yeah. And I understand that. I understand how business works. And if it's not, if this, the figures aren't stacking up, it's mm -hmm. not good business. So, but I'm not, I'm not the business side of boxing. I'm, I'm the this side of boxing. Yeah. So I, I see it from my perspective. They see it from yeah. making money. Yeah, yeah. they want to make money. To be fair to them, they've never gone bankrupt once in 33 years, have they? No, no. Well, so the numbers, man, aren't they? That's just something. That Do you remember when they had ABI and he won world title? Yeah, I know. Michael yeah. Ben. Yeah, Michael Ben. In uh, yeah. first defence, they cashed him in against really Barry really Bow, didn't they? <laughs> well, he nearly went bankrupt then, Barry. Did he? Yeah. yeah, he was struggling, well, so yeah. he managed to use his business acumen, yeah. and then he brought him back again. And I think he won a world title again. Then he won it two times, didn't he, Irby? Well, that just shows you what a good businessman he is. Very true, man, Barry. Yeah. I've got more time for Barry than Son. Yeah, Son's had it give him money, but the yeah. father hasn't. Barry's paid his dues. Yeah, I, you know what? I box. We like Barry, eh? don't we, Glenn? Yeah, I like everybody. I don't, <laughs> there's no, nobody I don't like. Glenn wants to work with you, Eddie. You don't like. I don't, I don't <laughs> dislike anybody. Unlike um, me. The thing is, you know, Barry paid his dues back in the day, didn't he? I remember when he boxed, when promoting uh, Sheffield City Hall, I think he was sponsored by Storm Seal. Storm Seal, I used to work for them. I boxed on quite a lot of them shows, I boxed on quite a lot Johnny of Johnny Graham had, not Johnny Graham, uh, Johnny Nelson yeah. fought for world title on the Storm Seal that's show it. against Carlos de Leon. That's right, I boxed on the undercard. That was mad. Because the night before he were out, he were in Josephine's money party in that little dilly that, on it. <laughs> that was crazy that night. Hey, that's well documented. But there's <laughs> also they also did quite a lot of other shows there as well. I boxed on a I thought you were gonna say Dilly on did all drugs in in Pittsmore that night. <laughs> we don't do drugs. Um, <laughs> drugs are for mugs. Exactly. And boozers are losers. <laughs> I boxed on quite a lot of Barry Hearns shows. Uh, I boxed on the Michael Watson, Chris Eubanks, Bill. You did, didn't you? Were that at that, White Hart Lane? White Hart Lane. I boxed Eamon Lockram, who went on to be world champion. And just to box on an outdoor stadium like that, on a show like that, for me, mm. it was unbelievable. I boxed on Chris Eubanks, boxed Dan Sherry. Uh, he were robbed Dan Sherry, wasn't he? Yeah, back end back was, They took two um, points off him, didn't yeah. they? But he should have been disqualified, shouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. But, Again, you know what boxing's like. Listen, mm. so yeah, we know Barry's, what happened that night. Don't we? <laughs> so Barry's paid his dues, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, he's, know, he's been there, seen it, done it. Got ten t-shirts. That's it. Now he's on twenty. Now Eddie's doing what Eddie does. So and good luck to him. Like I say, I'm all for boxers earning yeah. money. Hardest game in the world. So if you can earn money, I'm all for that. Yeah. I, the, the one thing I get sick of seeing is boxers. We need some sort of education where boxers. Of you know, got something after boxing. You know, yeah. like me. I, luckily, I, I dropped into being a trainer. But how many boxers, you know, are not fortunate enough to stay in the game? We need some sort of education where boxers can stay in the game after after the career's over. Yeah. And they've got nothing. Mm. What do they do? Yeah. You know, I can name you. You can name through history. It's, 
falling on hard times. It's about time somebody, I don't know how or whatever, but it's about somebody or some some organisation. This, this is what you need to be looking at, Nicola. Exactly, Nicola. Nicola we need to do this edu education. That's what it is. You need to, you know, get some, get us some more of your officers and let's yeah, get have fighters in an afternoon once a day, learning something, doing some computer skills or yeah. maths and English, basic stuff yeah. to go into the real world, yeah. isn't it? So as when the boxing career is finished, we've got something that can. Like you did, Lynn. You went to college, didn't you? College, you? Thirty-three. Went back, what you think? Thirty-three. Went back to college. I was older than some of the teachers. Yeah. After I retired, when I, was, I, was, I retired when I was 33, you know, you have to get a job. And you go, well, doing what? I've not had a job. You used to get up in the morning with a run, wasn't well, you? you know, you've got, you've got some guy, that's, you start, I started at 16, and you've got some guy telling you, right, you're doing this, you're doing that. Brendan, in my case, you know, a father figure telling me what to do, and when I'm boxing, and, you know, you should do this, and you should do that. And then at 33, all of a sudden it's over, and then you're on your own, and what do you do? You know, you go and sign on, like I did, you sign on, and then you think to yourself, well, I'm 33 and I've got the rest of my life to think about what I'm going to do. My boxing career's over, mm. I've got no money, yeah. I've got no um, qualifications to get a job, yeah. so you know what we all end up doing, or could end up doing, and, and it's sad, and I see it over and over and again. So boxers need education. There's a new thing uh, being, uh, I've seen it recently, Rest and care um, for boxers. Somebody's organising like a rest and care run, which I think is great. Um, it's about time somebody did something for ex-boxers. But let's not wait until boxers are ex-boxers. Let's educate them while they're still boxing, so that when they do become ex-boxers and the careers are over, they've got something to fall back on. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Another thing I'd, I'd like to see changed in sport, Glenn. I'd like to see each gym who's got a laminate like yourself, uh, that's a, if you're a bo bo British Boxing Board of Control registered manager, trainer, promoter, I'd like to see some equipment in here for after every session, somebody can just have a quick scan. Yeah, oh that'd be great, that wouldn't I mean, what are they, that seven one. grand or something? About seven, seven grand. Seven I mean, grand. Yeah. And how many gyms is the register? Say if there's 100, 100 times seven is 700,000 pounds, isn't it? Yeah. So Any Anything that benefits boxing, whether it's scans or yeah. MRI, I think it's good. But I also think that comes down to education of trainers as well. Mm. If, for instance, if you're not letting your kids have wars in gym and getting beat up and getting concussed in gyms, mm. there's no need for that sort of thing. But if you're one of these gyms where kids are getting beat up and having wars and, yeah. you know, that's down to the education of the trainer again. Well, you know, in Ingle Gym, they don't have sparring, do they? No, we, we, we used to spar, you, you know. When it like body sparring. Yeah, and we used so. to spar to the body. But mm. again, you know, it's six one off, there's another. It's all right sparring to, I used to spar to the body with Bomber Graham and Brian yeah. Anderson. Oh, and then, and then, bunch of Brian, and then you'd get him with somebody out nine and a half stone, and I'd get him with somebody nine and a half stone, and you've got your hands here, because you're used to sparring to the body. So, yeah, it's got it's got its place, body sparring. But if you're if you're boxing, you need to be sparring to air. If you're sparring to body, how you gonna learn to slip punches and roll? So do, you, do you think that's why the Ingle style has this thing about it, where it's just about running, out, staying out of the way, not getting hit, instead of knocking guys out? Because only really Nas that did that, wasn't there? Maybe Ryan Rose. Yeah, but again, you've used that word that I don't use. You've used, and it's a, it's it's a really. It's famous, the Ingle style, right? And I'm not saying it's not the Ingle style. It's for me, it's the bomber game style. Because until bomber came, nobody were doing that. Yeah. Nobody were doing that. Hands down. Thing. They were. This is in the gym when bomber arrived. There were Chris Walker, John Kelly, Mick Mills, Mick Mills Lloyd, uh, and maybe one or two others. And everybody boxed like that. No, Brian came after. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah. And then bomber come and got his hands down style, and then. Everybody was doing it, and Brendan perfected it. Yeah, um, and it's become well known as the Ingle style. The Ingle style, which is because everybody, everybody knows yeah. that style. Uh, but until Bono was doing that, nobody was doing that. Mm. And then, but the downside to that is, you know, a lot of people have been successful doing it, but there's been a lot of people as well being unsuccessful doing it because well, that trying style, to do it. yeah, trying to emulate. Naz, Johnny, Bomber, whoever, and it don't work for everybody. What I try and do with my kids is, I try it. I try to be Bomber Graham, hands down. It, it don't work for everybody. Um, and you've got to be exceptional. So out of all that, all that era, all them people, we, we go on about this Ingo style, who 
won world titles with that style. You could say Johnny Nelson, because Bomber didn't win a Johnny world title, Bomber, didn't he? Bomber, Bomber, Bomber didn't win. No. Johnny Nelson won it with that style, Nas. didn't he? Nas didn't, well, it is an Ingle style. Yeah. He did have his own style. No, I thought he no. Was the, the thing is with Nas, he was a puncher, weren't he? Yeah. So he had the hands down, the elusive, moving around style, mm. uh, but he could bang. And he yeah. were entertaining, and he were, you know, Nas, that but yeah, one off. That yeah, one off. But that style. If you name me on one hand, how many people have been successful from that gym? No, in the world. Name me in the world. How many people are successful with that? Roy Jones. Yeah, Sugar Ray Leonard. Ali. Ah, uh, Muhammad Ali. Ray Robinson. Ray Ro maybe yeah. These are great, aren't they? Though. But he's, yeah. Put Nas in that bracket as well. Yeah, but, great. Uh, but if you're thinking how many people box, and then you look how many people have been successful with that style. Not it's many, is it? I remember when Bomber boxed Charles Brewer and he got caught on chin and just before he got stopped. He sat on the ropes and his hands went here and he started doing this sort of thing. Whereas he, he was never going to do any other things because he, he would never done it. But if you get tagged and you get on ropes, you want your hands here. Yeah. Not down Were here. Were you a trainer to, then? Yeah, I trained Did you scream to him to get his hands up? Yeah, but as I always said, if you've been doing something for as long as they're allowed, uh, you're not going to suddenly start, start doing this. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like when Nas box, uh, sorry, when Nas started being trained by. Uh, Manny Stewart, they all said he's gonna do this and he'll do this and that. And I said, Yeah, and as soon as shit hits fan, they'll go back to doing what he's always done. And he mm. did. Mm. Because you can't, you can't train from being a kid, having your hands down and being elusive, and then suddenly start trying to perfect this style. It don't work. Yeah. It don't. It's like asking somebody who, it's like asking, I don't know, who do we know boxers like this? Let's think. Ah, oh, it's Frank Bruno. Yeah, it's not, it's like saying Frank Bruno. Bruno. It's like saying Frank Bruno, right, I want you to drop your hands now, dance around the ring and be elusive and drop your hands down here. He wouldn't do it, he couldn't possibly do it. No, no, because he's always. Joshua can't do it, he tried in that fight. He can't do it. Elusive. You know, you can't do it. The physiques don't allow him to do it, do they? There's an there's a interview on uh, YouTube or something from Mom, uh, Angelo Dundee saying to uh, Cassius Clay at the time, um, get your hands up, something. He says, he says, when he comes back to the corner, he says, right, get your hands down because the round before when he told him to get his hands up, he was getting, he was getting beat. So when he came back to the corner, he said, get your hands down and start doing what you're doing. If you're, doing, if you're training that way, that becomes your style. If you're training this way, that, and you can't change it midway Stick to your fight. style, is that what you're stick, saying? Stick. Don't try and be something that you can't that you do. you can't be. Listen, I always wanted to be a moment Ali. Mm. It's, it's ridiculous, you can't. You've yeah. got to develop your own style. Don't try and be somebody else. Don't try and be mm. something that you can't be. Yeah, you develop you your style, your own style. You know, yeah, you can look at certain people and think, oh, I like that, what he does, how he does this, or and you can try and do it, but develop your own style. Don't try and be somebody mm. else. Be individual. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. I see what you mean. But uh, what did you think, Glenn, about Tyson Fury's fight with Otto Wallin? Again, this oh, is a dark horse. A dark horse, and we were there. Yeah. I just want to thank a few people who made that trip. We were there. We went to fight in we Vegas. Went, we went to Vegas, we got eight tickets. Um, John Rawlins. Right? John Rawlins, just want to give John Rawlins a shout out. Uh, got us eight tickets, and um, not only did we get eight tickets, but when we were checking out at the airport uh, the next day, who walked in? Tyson Fury. And not only did he walk in, but he spent time talking to the kids. With his sunglasses on. With his sunglasses on, with his stitches in his eye. You know, and, and I, I think that's... The guy looked bad, Glenn. You know what? It didn't. It didn't look bad. We've seen, we've seen bad cuts. Yeah, yeah. It looked, it looked like whoever had done it had done a proper job on it. Yeah. Uh, it was, and obviously, the guy, the surgeon who's done it, has done a job. But I want to give a shout out to Tyson because he made some of my kids, some of the kids that we had there, they will remember that for the rest of their lives. Tyson Fury coming in and talking to him and having pictures took. Some of the kids, the youngest kid with us were 14 year old. Uh, so that trip that we had to Las Vegas, it surpassed everything. You know, you got young kids going for a week to Las Vegas and then they find out that they got eight tickets to uh, anyway, title fight, and then the next day they happened to bump into Tyson Fury, as well as bumping into people in the gyms that we went round. Um, so them kids will remember that for the rest of the days. Yeah, that's brilliant. What did you think to the fight? Again, banana skin, weren't it? That were, that weren't supposed to be. That, you know, people thought that was going to be a, uh, an easy fight. But I'll tell you something. On that performance, it, if you'd have boxed. 
certain other people who have been beat when he got beat, yeah. yeah. So he managed to get through it. it. I can't say he got through it on scare because that cut were a bad cut. Um, but luckily he managed to get through it. And, uh, and you know what, the other thing as well, they loved him over there. You know, when he came out with the Mexican hat on, the Mexican people, uh, what a showman. They actually, honestly, absolutely loved him. Do you think he gets beat, Glyn? Uh, sorry, do you think that he's, he's at early, early in his, top of early in his coming down now, or do you think we can't judge him because he got cut in round three? I don't think you can he really didn't look judge himself, him. Did no, he? he didn't look himself. And you know, everybody's blaming the trainer the cup, and the, the cup. Train. Well, he's a babby, that trainer, isn't he? Yeah. Um, but, you know. You're pretty calm, that trainer. What are you between rounds? What are you with, with the Tyson? thing The thing you've got to remember is, have you, for anybody that's never been butted or had their eye cut, you don't. As a fighter, you never know how bad it is. But you always think it's worse than it really is. Yeah. So you could see Tyson wiping his blood away and. Um, he obviously didn't know it was that bad, and it were bad. And I think if the roles had been reversed, the other kid would have been cut that bad, the fight had been stopped. Um, but I think as a fighter, he handled that cut pretty well, you know. He did. He didn't panic. Uh, you know, he's, he, we've all seen fighters get cut and then they come out, you know, crazy trying to finish it because they know they cut. And yeah. they were early in the fight, weren't it? What round were they when they got cut? Third. Round? Third. So we're early in the fight. Um, There's 29 so, minutes for that cut. So yeah, he, he had he had a few rounds to panic, um, but he, 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 you know he take your off to the kid. He, he stayed calm. He got on with the job. Um, but as as I said, if it had been the other way around, uh, I think the result would have been different. Yeah. Uh, do you think he'll fight February 22nd? No. Then? no well, we, I wouldn't. We, we, if we, I were his trainer yeah. or his manager or whoever's, whoever's looking after him. With that cut, I won't be boxing in February. Yeah. Is that what they penciled in? February? Yeah, Feb 22nd, but we've heard of somebody who Dennis knows that who's in the now here that it's not going to be Feb 22nd. They're going to look for another date now. I think a cut, you know, you know you've got scar tissue around your face. You've got, you've got two cuts actually, you've got yeah. one on his eyelid and this one. Um, cuts like that, you know, on the surface. It might look healed, it might look alright. Yeah, but underneath, but underneath it's not going to be. Oh, well, we, we had that with you, didn't we, before Paul had yeah. fight when he got cut, didn't he? That's going to take. Dennis said you shouldn't fight because it will split yeah. up, and Kerry Case said the same, didn't he? Yeah. But sometimes you've got to roll the dice, haven't you? It's a business, isn't it, Bob? You have, you've got to roll the dice, but you've also got to be realistic, mm. you know, and, and me being realistic and thinking, if he thinks in, he's boxing in, well, again, it depends who he's boxing in February. Yeah. Ooh, have you got through now? Have you got in? Have you got in? Wilder at Feb 22nd. But I think what Wilder will do now, he'll put the Otis fight back to January ish. Right. And then I think he might say he might have a back injury or something, and then he might not fight well June, oh, July. Right, right. That makes Tyson, yeah. that puts Tyson in no man's land. Yeah. I don't think yeah. they both want to fight each other, mate. I don't think Tyson wants to risk it. I, want, I think he wants to be this Lanil, champ yeah. forever. Wilder, why, why does he want to risk being outboxed? Because he, let's face it, if Tyson yeah. turns it on, he'll outbox him yeah. all night. Yeah. But can he stay away from him for 36 minutes? The, the problem you're getting you've older got, as well, isn't he? Yeah, the problem you've got is you just said a word then, risk it. That's what boxers do, that's what you risk it every time you get in a ring. Yeah. And you've got to know, you, you know, if you're not going to risk it, but you've got to be, you've got to be, have a calculated risk. Yeah, if Tyson could box again in February. That's a risk, mm. but let's, who's he going to box? And you could, you know, you could get him a, a running round job, like we said with Tommy. Yeah. But they can always end up being banana skins. Yeah. You know, he could box. He could box a, I don't know, a journeyman, and the cut opens again, and that sets him back even further. So. Well, this is how I think it's going to go. Wilder Ortiz rematch. I think they'll put that back round right about Christmas yeah. or January. He'll fight him, then he'll say he's taking a break because he's got an injury. So that Tyson Fury's uh, going to want to come back when he's cut to see about April, May. So he'll have a fight then. Wilder might fight July after then. So then that's 2020 gone that's and they've it. both had another few more paydays. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know when I realised that Tyson Fury wasn't going to rematch Wilder, soon as I seen his family saying why do, we, why do we need to fight Wilder? His big, his big brother Shane said it. Why do we need to fight Wilder when we can get very good money for fighting these guys? It's a business, isn't it? It's a business. aren't they? They're like a pound note. That's how I look at it. And then I'm hearing things from people close to them saying they don't want it. But I've also heard that Wilder isn't so bothered either. 
But again, you just said it's business, it's about money. They'll want to get them belts off Ruiz, won't they? Because he's an Al Heyman fighter, isn't he? He beats Josh yeah, Ruiz, and I think Ruiz. But if it's all about money, I can understand it. But then again, you think, well, hang on a minute. I heard Tyson got 19 million for that. 19 yeah. million dollars. 18.8 million or something. So, yeah. how much money does one person want? Yeah. You know, I'm not saying he should think about retiring, because you know, he's probably not really. He's worth 40 million now, is isn't it? Tyson? Is it? Apparently, yeah. So, he's a big league now, isn't he? If I were worth 40 million, I don't think I'd be boxing. It's too hard. It's too hard a game. Listen, it's, you get, what I think you've got to do with boxing, and this is everybody, listen, get your money and get out. Get out. You see, this is how I look at it, right? And Tyson's a smart cookie. All that about, you know, certain people, I'm not going to say who, well, I will, Frank Warren, Tyson, he's my mate, and listen, that look, at the end of the day, Frank Warren said that about many a fighter when they're top at tree. Joe Calzaghe were his best mate. They ended up in court. Yeah, yeah. Tyson will be looking at the situation now. Now that his five fights with Warren are up, yeah. he'll be looking at his thinking, right, how can I get away out of this now? Because they all want to get on Sky, don't they? Let's yeah. have it right. Yeah. All roads lead to Sky, not BT Sport, yeah. Sky. Yeah. He'll be thinking, I've had five with Frank now, how can I get out of this? Trust me, mm -hmm. that's what I think. And, and, and I've been right getting that. I've been with Dennis nearly five years and, and let me say this, I had my assumptions or whatever about boxing when I got involved. I, don't forget I give up a good carpet to get into this, didn't I? Yeah, crazy. I must be off my rock, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's a drug, innit? It's like you you've got no personal life, have you? What would I do if I didn't box? You've been hacking, it's like being boxing. a landlord, isn't it, Glenn? Listen. But I looked at it and I thought, I'm going into this with Dennis here and I want to see what it's about. Now I see what it's about. It's just business, isn't it? Frank Warren ain't bothered about Tyson Fury. Mm -hmm. Eddie ain't bothered. Bob Adam, they're not bothered about them. They're not going around their houses for Sunday dinner. Look, it's business, isn't it? It's, yeah. Everybody's going to say, this is my new best friend, this is my new best friend. Yeah. It ain't, there's no mates. There's no your mates trainer mates. might be your best mate. 80% of them are probably on your side, aren't they? Yeah. Well, wow. some of them are put in fights that yeah. shouldn't be doing. You putting your name, shouldn't we? We've all been in them changing rooms when the, the guys <laughs> won. Yeah, and we've all and been we've in when they lost. In, listen, I'm not going to name names. Yeah, we know, don't we? We were at Ponce Forge on uh, Friday, yeah. and I was in that changing room that we were in probably ten years ago. I was in that changing room, no hell, I'm saying I was in the changing room. I couldn't actually get in the changing room because the guy who was boxing, all his friends were in there, and I remember after the fight, I went to see him. And I walked straight in, and the only guy were there were me, my ex -pitties. and that were it. And yeah. so we've all been in them changing rooms where winners. It's like David A when he got beat against uh, that one Dennis put on. Carl Thompson. Carl Thompson, yeah. <laughs> there were him, Anthony Small, and his missus, and Adam Bover. That's it. Everybody else went to after party. <laughs> And David Day, you were like, where's all my mates? Did yeah. all that after party, yeah, they were toasting yeah, him and exactly. he wasn't even there. Exactly. And That's it's an eye opener. Everybody wants to be around a winner, don't they? Yeah, exactly. When you start losing and you start saying to people, listen mate, yeah. it's a way show tonight, you've got to pay for your ticket. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. You know what exactly. happens then, exactly. don't we? Boxing is notorious, for him. and that's how boxing's always been. Mm. You know, look at, I don't know, for history. Look at Joe Lewis. Oh. You know, look at, you should yeah, be He actually earned about four million, didn't he, Joe Lewis? So, end up broke. End up greeter in Caesar's Palace, weren't he? So, Barry, Barry Hearn told me that. He ended up a greeter at Caesar's Palace we, on Skid Row, didn't he? And he died in Vegas, didn't he, Joe Lewis? Didn't he live out there, didn't he? Same as Sonny yeah, Liston. Well, we had a, when we were in Vegas last week, we speak to this guy. Um, a, a good fire as well. Uh, Leroy Caldwell. C A U Caldwell. And uh, he was telling us about he sparred with Muhammad Ali when he was Cassius Clay in Miami Beach. And he sparred with Sonny Liston in Johnny Tocos. And he said. In uh, Vegas. In Vegas. And he was telling us some stories. He boxed, I think he boxed uh, Joe Bugner. He was, he was around that great era of the heavyweights. Mm, he's got his marbles and now he's training guys in, in a gym in Las Vegas. But what a great guy to talk to. Unbelievable guy, you know. Oh, that guy was part of Sonny Liston. Yeah, yeah, he was telling us about Sonny Liston. He said, uh, you know, he, he used to have a drink and he knew too much, and uh, they had to get you rid of him. Yeah, he didn't wait, Yeah, he said, oh yeah, they had to get rid of him. He said he used to drink too much and let his mouth run away with him, and he knew too much, and they had to get rid of him. And he said, he meaning said, that second fight with Ali when it probably well, he, he said he uh, he took an overdose. Yeah, it's yeah, heroin, wasn't it? Apparently, but he were, uh, he were fried to death in needles. 
So it was really, really dodgy what happened with Smith. Mm. But hey, that's it's boxing, isn't it? But like I said, it, it's a sport unlike any other, but it's, it can become a drug, can't it? Yeah, it is a drug, you it's know. It's not money, isn't it? <laughs> and look, <laughs> what I always say is, you know, I would, the brighter the spotlight, the harder it is to walk away. Yeah. You know, we all know fighters who should have walked away. You should have realized you're, you're all easy, you're Joe Lewis. They all should have walked away a long yeah. time before. Roy Jones. Roy Jones, but walk away and do what? What, mm. what the fighters do? Pundit work. Well, yeah, pundit work, but not all fighters are good talkers. Yeah. And, you know, or they can't read a fight good, or they're not lucky enough to, to get a job being a pundit. And some of these pundits, you know, again, I, I, you know, I want somebody. I like Teddy Atlas. Yeah. Teddy Atlas says it. I like ways. Teddy Atlas. Yeah, that's where I lost his job at ESPN, isn't it? For Saying speaking it truth. Is. But there's a lot of... You know, we met Teddy. Oh, loads of times. Yeah, we met you with it. We met Vegas, Vegas yeah. again, yeah. But we never spoke to him because we've been interviewed by somebody. But all kids were saying, oh, Teddy Atlas is here. He used to train Mike Tyson. But, we you did, know, yeah. when... And Michael Moore. Michael Moore. And some good fighters. The thing is, we need a, you, you as a spectator watching boxing, you need a commentator to tell you what you don't know. Mm. But some of these commentators, they just tell you what they're expected to say. And if they don't say the right things, you know, they end up getting sacked or, you know, you get rid of the answer. You need, a, you need a, a commentator to be honest and say the right things. Not, because otherwise you sit there and go, why is he saying that? That's a lot of rubbish. You know, not just speaking up for the house fighter, you know, so. But it must be a good job. Some people have got good jobs out of it. You know, talk, start watching boxing, you know, talking about it, getting paid for what you enjoy watching. What, what, that's a great job, isn't it? I yeah. love that job, but I won't last long as a commentator. Yeah. I'd, I'd have to tell the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always tell the truth. Uh, Glyn, what do you think about Triple G? Do you think he'll get his title back? I like him, me. Triple, uh, do you think yeah. he were robbed against Canelo? Uh, in first one. Again, listen, again, you watch it through by his eyes. I like Canelo. Mm. I like Gigi. I, I like them both. Yeah. The only thing that I like GGG. The only thing that has got me uh, disliking Canelo a little bit is the drugs thing. Yeah. If it weren't for that, I'd be 100% fan of his. But it's that he's tainted just because of the drugs. Um, you know, you can say whatever you want to say, and yeah. the size of him or whatever. He's a great fighter, mm. but. He's just going to have a black mark over him just because of the drugs. Yeah. So and that and then GGG, you know, he's not he's not like that, is he? He's hard working. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think about him getting rid of his trainer now that he's at the big time? I'm surprised at that because I remember when um, what's that kid Kel Brook box from? Errol Spence. No, um, boxing Carson twice. Jones. Carson Jones. When Carson Jones was training here years ago, I remember uh, Abel Sanchez saying to us, "I've got a kid now." GGG uh, and he's this and he's this, and you think, yeah, we've heard that before. All trainers said, I've got this kid. And it turned out it was Triple G. He was Olympic, Olympic medalist, wasn't yeah. Triple G? Yeah, and he was raving, he was raving about it. So I don't know what's happened as to why they fell out. Is it money? Yeah, he's, he's ba it's his money. Triple G put a press release out and said, we're split up over money when, when, when really it's a bit, like, not very classy, is it? No, sadly. But the kid, Abel Sanders, He's turned around apparently from what I've heard and said, well, we've hit big time now then, haven't we? You know, we you getting this big deal? And he said, well, I'm not going to be getting you 10% what mm -hmm. you have been getting because I'm getting more money. I'm going to put you on what you've been earning before. See that? And, he, and he said, well, well, that's not good to me because I thought we'd done this as a team. Yeah, so they've, yeah. they've sort of like gone the separate ways. It's like Naz and Brendan. I always remember Brendan telling this story. Well, if I had 75 grand the fight, only Brendan. If, <laughs> if I start with you at the beginning, it's 10%. Yeah. It's got to be 10% at the end. You can't yeah. move the goalpost halfway through and apparently yeah. what Naz did. Uh, he didn't want to pay Brendan 10%. And he moved the goalpost. Well, I think once a trainer accepts a fee for that, he's, he, he's behind the he's behind the, the ball, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. He's not, he's listen, ta tails wagging dog, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. That's a that's a good scenario. Mm. Yeah, and you might as well forget it. Yeah. Right. Listen, if it's ten percent at the beginning, it's ten percent at the end. Yeah. Brent, like I said, Brendan always used to tell that story. He said, if I if I get you a fight and you're on a thousand pound, are you happy to pay me ten percent? Yeah. If you get another fight and you get five grand, are you happy? Yeah. If you get in a fight and you get in twenty, and that's how. You, and then, and then one or two fight, fights later when you get in, 
100 grand, are you slapping to pay me 10%? And when the fighters start going, hmm, you know, you think, forget it. It's, yeah. it's 10% at the beginning, it's 10%. Brendan made millions out of boxing yeah, though, didn't exactly. he? Did well, didn't he? Yeah, did very, very well. You know, did well out Nas. Did very well, did that well out of Bomber, yeah, he had a lot. You yeah. know what? Brendan were established. Bomber were getting good money, Bomber he back, money. back then, listen. Barney don't forget, used. Bomber had some great fights. British, European, Commonwealth, middleweight, light middleweight, super middleweight champion. He was a massive payer, wasn't he, Barney Eastwood, in them days, wasn't he? And don't forget, Brendan sold Bomber's contract to Barney Eastwood and stayed on as trainer. Did Bomber get out no like that? Um, listen, don't there's a story, but I don't know if it's true or not. Mm. But. Oh, well. But we'll finish off on this. Uh, there's been a lot of talk on social media the last 48 hours. Sonny Edwards, Tommy. Tommy's looks like Tommy's going to play a good guy. Sonny's going to play pantomime villain, that's isn't it? it. That's, that's uh, do you think that fight should happen next summer? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. One thing there you I go, want. One thing I want to get right while we're here as well is everybody's talking about um, Tommy Franklin at the British title fight yeah. against Sonny. That's that's wrong. I'll tell you what actually happened there. The Tommy would contract to box on at Ponds Forge, um, and then the purse bids came out, and so we never even we never even went down that road. We were already contracted to box on Dennis's show, and so rather than say getting involved in purse bids, it came after the fight. You know we. we we, we couldn't really very well say, well, you know, we've got a British title fight coming up, but we'll, we'll, we'll sack this fight. So, but hopefully it'll be a good fight. Like I said, Tommy's a gentleman. I looked on social media lately, there's a lot of... Stig kicked it all off, didn't he? We were after to show about him with all that. He, he had it all going on Twitter, didn't he? I, my, my phone's <laughs> been with ping, 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 ping. Go on, Stig. I'm thinking, what's going on here? Um, but like I said, Tommy's a gentleman. Yeah. Tommy's not going to start slagging anybody. Sonny can fight though, can he? Sonny can fight. He can't fight, can they? Listen, at can fight. He's super skilled, isn't he? He's been here, hasn't he, a couple of times, yeah, hasn't he? And we've seen him training in Marbella. Yeah, Nobody's he can, saying he, he can't, can't fight. fight. I'm not he saying fight. nothing bad. I'm not a world class fighter. Listen, he's, a, he's a good fighter. And mm. listen, later on, it's a good fight. But not yet. We but don't want yet. yet. Like I said, yeah. Tommy's just had a, a hard, hard 12 round fight. Mm. So we're not going to jump out of an hour 12 round fight against somebody as, as, as good as Sonny. Mm. But yeah, what a great fight later down. Who would you make a favourite in that fight then? Well, I'm, going to say, I'm, I'm going to say my guy, obviously. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's going to say they're going to say their guy. Yeah. You know, Tommy's very technical. You mm. know, Sonny's a great boxer. Although Tommy's a great boxer. Yeah. You know, Tommy, uh, Sonny went 12 rounds his last fight and uh, won unan unanimously. Um, Tommy's just gone 12 rounds against a tough kid. Um, so later on down the line, that's, that's a good fight, that. Yeah, yeah, it is a good fight. So, right then, Glenn, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Trust Thank you for the cup of tea. And, and uh, uh, you're going to office tomorrow, aren't you? Office. Yeah, well, we're yeah. fetching Tommy. Tommy's coming down with his new. Do you know what? His face do not look bad. <laughs> uh, he's got a few scuffs, but. After a 12 round fight, you're going to do aren't you? Yeah. So yeah, we're coming down tomorrow to sort things out and then let's see what happens. Payday. Payday. <laughs> and then we're off to New York. Right. Yeah. Peace out. Keep on trucking. Shout out to anybody, Glenn. Uh, everybody. 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 Seven supported us, looked after us, uh, and just everybody. Yeah. Thank so, you. All right. I'll give a shout out to uh, Climate Cool, Orchid Palm Ohms, and Cozy Ohms. Steve Crump. We'll give Dennis Hobson a shout out as well. I've got a 2 30 appointment with Dennis and I'm five minutes late. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Look at that shoulder roll. Alright. Oh, shout out to Sporting Icons, 7 pm tonight. Can't wait. Get you on the channel.